number one Iron Age booty daddy. But I say, but if you want to be the best, take that passion and learn how to do it. And I don't think that, I don't think that is being preached to our young generations or held even my generation, you know, which is just mm -hmm. the millennials. I don't think that was driven into them in that way, the way that it was for prior generations. I just, I, and I, and I miss no. seeing it and it's, it's refreshing to hear it. Prior generations have the same problem. Ask anybody yeah. about well, uh, yeah, about the true. books they were expected to read in school and whether or not it affected their joy of reading. Yeah, absolutely. And and mm -hmm. that's what I was saying. I said, never read because you think you have to. If you mm -hmm. do that, you hate it. You're going to hate every minute of it. Have you ever had something you're going, I really love this book. Then you go, oh, geez, I got to get it done by this time because I have an interview or I have to write a report. Mm -hmm. And all the joy is taken out of it. And, yep. and now there are different people in the world. So let's talk about that for just a minute. We have people who are, are that that athlete class or the world class. They are driven to do everything better each time. That is part of their process. They like to see it sharpened like the blade. And they are that person. You want that person to be the one that is pursuing the, the that goal of perfection. Because that person becomes better every time that stone hits the edge of the blade. They become mm -hmm. sharper. They become more aware. And you have other people that aren't a blade. They're a spoon or a fork or something else. They have their own beauty, but they love just being able to enjoy their life. And they have things they do. They should do those things. One of the worst things you can do to a person who is non-competitive is to shove them out there and go, you're going to do this or you're never going to eat again. <laughs> you're not, you're going to, you're going to hit that home run or you're not coming home. So there's that, the, the joy is lost. Like you said, with reading, with playing ball, with play, playing piano, whatever, finding where that person fits in and saying, you have a place in society, but don't expect to go and be the sharpest blade then. You're not a blade. You don't have to be one, but don't ask the blade to not be itself either. Right. We have forgotten mm -hmm. how to allow people to be themselves. And it's very difficult because um, we each see ourselves as the microcosm of all humanity. We think everybody is exactly like that. what works for me might not work for somebody else. And we make this mistake with children frequently. We want them all to act and sit and do exactly alike. Now, this is damaging. It's still happening. It's just happening the opposite way. Now we have them where you're all going to act exactly the same. Nobody will have any standards, but everybody must speak exactly the same. And everybody must do what I tell them to do and think as I tell them to do, or they're not going to be able to be functional in our society. Those kind of thoughts, when you're that critical of it, when you're that pushy, where everybody must conform, there was a conformity to it in the 60s, too. Let me tell you something. If you didn't say the right, do the right things, mm -hmm. I'm talking here about the culture of the hippie culture was that way a lot. You would mm -hmm. actually have odd fights come out where people were literally, you know, uh, uh, cutthroat, you know, burning down a place because they didn't like what somebody did over there. Those people in that building didn't do that. You set the ROTC building on fire because of mm -hmm. something that's happening overseas. These kids are just going to school. Quit. And, you know, there was that, that push to conform, to make everybody just alike, to make them just like me. Uh, it's very human. It's very uh, common. And we have a tendency <coughs> through our own successes. But we cannot keep demanding that the very best of the blades become a spoon. Mm -hmm. Can't keep doing that. We can't keep allowing a spoon to be picked up out of the drawer and go, okay, I'm going to be better than the blade. Put me over here. It doesn't work that way. Be ourselves. Be what you love. Love what you do and keep doing it. Find out what you fit into and being that person, being, like you said, crafting that part of it, what you love, getting better and better at it. Uh, it's the difference between hobby and a passion. Right. Uh, you know, uh, people have a hobby. It's just what they do for fun. I, I play Minecraft for fun. There are people who play Minecraft because they're out there to, I don't know, they, they have, you know, streaming everything and they do this incredible war, worlds and stuff. I just like go boo boo boop until the, the creeper blows me up, you know, I'm <laughs> and, 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 and I do it just because that it helps my brain relax. That's a hobby. Um, that's something I do for fun. But when I'm writing, I have to try to write at the very best I can write. Now, the difference between yeah. writing to a conformist level, what, who's writing, who's telling me these rules and why? Learning to write so somebody can read it, to understand that the sentence ended here, this is important. These are things that we have out there. Um, nothing chaps, chaps me off so bad as having somebody tell me to keep stop doing the freaking double space after my period. I am sorry. <laughs> 
I've, I've typed on a real typewriter and I do not care. I like seeing the double space because now that I'm losing my eyesight, I can <laughs> differentiate it better. And yeah. I'll do it. But those rules, who's making these rules and why? Well, there are rules that help us read and help us connect with each other. And then there are rules that are just made up because some jerk wants to be a little, you know, martinet about things and tell people what to do. And I don't, not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from Iron Age Nights. We go live every single Friday at 8 p.m. Central. Our goal is to bring to you the storytellers who are building and creating culture, trying to get away from what the mainstream corporations have subjected us to for so many years now. It would be so awesome if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel if you liked this conversation. And never forget to join us, like I said, on Friday. Friday nights. And until next time, cheers everybody.